In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you why Colossal Swords are the best weapon in Elden Ring. This is the 13th video in our series where we go through each weapon in a given weapon category, sort of dissect its pros and cons, and show you why you may or may not want to use it in your build. Before we get into each weapon, however, first let's talk about the pros and cons of this weapon type, as well as the playstyles I think most people will use when using it. First, let's talk a little bit about the pros of this weapon group. I think the first one is quite obvious that they deal incredible damage per swing, some of the highest damage in the game in a single hit, and they tend to make enemies flinch very easily when you strike them with this because of how heavy and impactful these weapons are. So it's very hard for an enemy to attack you if you're just R1 spamming into them. Secondly, these weapons tend to give you very good poise, meaning that even if you don't meet the 51 armor threshold for most attacks to be able to tank a hit, you generally can tank through hits anyway when attacking with this weapon if you get a ways into the animation. So it doesn't really matter as much what armor you're using, although it's still good to wear protective armor and armor with good poise. You generally don't have a problem getting swings off even if your armor and poise are not you know, as high as they would be in other builds. Additionally, there are a lot of unique weapon skills in this category that are only available on these weapons. Six of the 11 Colossal Swords have very unique weapon skills that you will not find on other weapons. And lastly, this weapon type has exceptional guard boost, meaning you can actually use these weapons to block very, very well, allowing you to do block counters with them and also just block in a pinch so you don't take full damage. Talking a bit about the cons of this weapon group, first is the weight. These weapons have an extremely high weight, making them difficult to use in a lot of builds that don't focus on a lot of endurance and still medium roll. Most builds want to be able to at least medium roll. This means that you're not going to have very good protection early on in the game if you're trying to use one until you've gotten your endurance very high. And because these weapons also typically have very high strength requirements, you almost have to put points exclusively into strength and endurance in order to be able to play this weapon. And that doesn't afford a lot of points for vigor either. So there is a bit of a struggle early on in the game to put a build together to use one of these weapons, something that's rectified later on in the game when you have more attribute points. Additionally, they do tend to attack slower than some other weapon types, so they're not as easy to get off against very fast and aggressive enemies. Talking about playstyles available to this weapon type, I think the vast majority of people are just going to use a single Colossal Sword and its weapon skill. And that's because of the weight of these and the fact that they deal very, very high damage, and very few of them scale well with like faith and intelligence, making a, like a Spellblade build with this less likely. And because they have such high strength requirements, you'd have to put a lot of points in strength to be able to one-hand it while you're still having a staff in the other hand to cast spells or a seal. And that means that you'd have to split your stats between like strength and intelligence or strength and faith. And while you could make a strength faith one more easily because of the claw mark seal, strength intelligence would be a lot more difficult to do with this weapon group. So I think the vast majority of people are just going to two-hand one of these and go to town with the R1 attacks, jump attacks, R2 attacks, and the weapon skill available to that weapon. So jumping into the unique Colossal Swords, first up is the Troll Knight Sword. The Troll Knight Sword shares a unique R2 thrust with the Zweihander and deals physical and magic damage. It has an average weight for a Colossal Sword in Elden Ring weighing 18 and requires some points in strength and dexterity and intelligence in order to wield. The Troll Knight Sword deals relatively okay damage for a Colossal Sword and can be found relatively early on in Carry a Manor, but it is also one of the shortest Colossal Swords, and its weapon skill, Troll's Roar, doesn't take advantage of its magic damage with the Shout portion, which makes up about one-third of the damage the weapon does. This means Troll's Roar would be more effective on a purely physical damage weapon like the Giant Crusher or Great Sword. The upside, though, is that the Shout deals Strike damage while the weapon itself deals Standard and Pierce, giving you another damage type that's good against enemies weak to strike like the Crystalline enemies. Having three damage types on one weapon because of its R2 thrust allows the Troll Knight Sword to be effective in just about any scenario. Additionally, Troll's Roar was also buffed in patch 1.07 to increase its damage as well as the timing of its poise, making it easier to pull off uninterrupted. The weapon scales about the same with strength and dexterity, so you'll want to keep these values roughly the same up to 50, at which point intelligence will perform about the same up to 50, and then you can tank strength and dexterity to 80. This makes this weapon good for a first playthrough and also fine in New Game Plus. Because the weapon scales poorly with intelligence, it doesn't lend itself well to a Spellblade sort of build, and I'd highly recommend leaning into the weapon skill for staggering enemies and following up with critical attacks. You can use the Roar Medallion to further boost Shout damage and the follow-up attack damage, and the Highland Axe does the same thing, so I recommend holding this in your offhand. If you slot the Assassin Cerulean and Crimson Daggers with this as well, you can heal and refund FP with each critical attack, similar to my Colossal Crusher build, but less effective since Colossal Swords don't trigger these talismans twice the way Colossal Weapons do. 
The Axe Talisman is also not a bad choice since the charged R2s of this weapon have phenomenal range. Next up we have the Royal Greatsword. The Royal Greatsword shares the default attack of most Colossal Swords and deals physical and magic damage. It has a heavy weight for a Colossal Sword in Elden Ring weighing 20 and requires some points in Strength, Dexterity, and Intelligence in order to wield. The Royal Greatsword has a very high attack rating for Unique Colossal Sword and is fairly long compared to other Colossal Swords. Its weapon Skill Wolf's Assault can be devastating and is not particularly hard to pull off, often one-shotting most enemies and often nearly killing difficult enemies in one strike. The downside is that you cannot get this weapon until very far into the game by doing Rani's questline. Wolf's Assault's initial strike can be challenging to land in a frantic fight with anything that's quick moving, but its follow-up AoE almost never misses. This AoE also builds up Frostbite, though this almost never triggers and really shouldn't be factored too much into this build. Additionally, this weapon does both physical and magic damage, which also applies to Wolf's Assault, though the majority of this damage is magic. The Royal Greatsword scales the best with Intelligence, then Strength, and finally Dexterity. The sweet spot for this weapon is about 50 Intelligence and 50 Strength, with minimum Dexterity. This means using this weapon with a staff in your offhand for some spellcasting isn't a bad idea, though if you two-hand this weapon with an optimal stat spread, you'll have nearly 1k attack rating, meaning spells won't really be necessary most of the time. I recommend either two-handing this weapon leading into its weapon skill for difficult and packs of enemies as well as bosses, or pairing it with a staff and cast some spells before you charge into melee range. Terra Magica is also a great spell for this weapon since it does about 60% magic damage, and don't forget to use the Magic Shroud and Crack tier as well to further increase this. Up next we have the Grafted Blade Greatsword. The Grafted Blade Greatsword shares the default attack of most Colossal Swords and deals physical damage. It has a very heavy weight for a Colossal Sword in L Ring Wing 21, and requires a lot of points in Strength and Summon Dexterity in order to use. The Grafted Blade Greatsword has fairly high attack rating and can be found very early in the game in Weeping Peninsula, making it a decent choice for players wanting to use a Colossal Sword early on. However, it's a rather short compared to other Colossal Swords, and its weapon skill, Oath of Vengeance, which increases all of your attributes by 5 for 60 seconds, is not particularly useful unless you're playing some sort of hybrid build, but you cannot buff the Grafted Blade Greatsword with spells, making it a bad pairing for this. For all intents and purposes, you'd be better off picking up the Greatsword since it has higher damage, length, and can be outfitted with numerous Ashes of Wars and buffed. However, if you wish to use this weapon, the sweet spot is about 50 strength with minimal points in dexterity, though it scales very well up to 80 strength. Dexterity doesn't have the best scaling, but you would invest here after strength to increase damage, likely in New Game Plus. I recommend using this weapon two-handed, buffing with Oath of Vengeance regularly to increase your stats by 5, and using Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow for boss fights, where you need a bit more damage since Oath of Vengeance can save you some points in faith. Next we come to the Rune's Greatsword. The Rune's Greatsword has a charged R2 attack that sends out a small wave of gravity energy that deals damage separately from the R2 and deals physical and magic damage. It's tied for the heaviest Colossal Sword in Elden Ring Wing 23 and requires a lot of points in strength and summoned intelligence in order to wield. The Rune's Greatsword has a lot going for it. It has very high attack rating for a unique Colossal Sword, it can be found not terribly far into the game in Redmain Castle, and it has a solid weapon skill and wave of destruction, and it has very high guard boost for a weapon and decent resistances, making it a defensive tool as well. However, it is the second shortest Colossal Sword, and it has almost no intelligence scaling, making it a poor choice for any spellblade. Wave of Destruction might not hit as hard as many other weapon skills, but it does stagger enemies, giving you the opportunity to spam this without taking damage. For this reason, using the Ritual Sword Talisman might not be a bad idea if you find you're not getting hit often in order to further boost this damage. The sweet spot for this weapon is 50 strength and minimum intelligence, but the weapon scales very well until 80 strength, and you should be aiming for about that by the end of your first playthrough. Since you barely get any damage from intelligence or strength from this point onward, this weapon will not perform as well in New Game Plus, and will fare even worse on a third playthrough. The best way to use this weapon is two-handed, leaning into the Wave of Destruction and boosting this with Shard of Alexander and reducing its cost with Carrion Filigree Crest and Sacrificial Axe in your offhand. Keep your mind stat somewhat high in the 25 to 30 range to get more uses of this before you need to use an FP flask, and be sure to block with it often utilizing block counters when you want to conserve FP. You can add the Taker's Cameo Talisman or Assassin's Crimson Dagger to offset the chip damage you'll receive when blocking. The Axe Talisman, while boosting the damage of your Charged Shard 2 attacks, does not increase the damage of the gravity spikes that come out with it, so just keep that in mind before using this one. Moving along to the Star Scourge Greatsword, the Star Scourge Greatsword is actually a paired weapon that cannot be two-handed the way other Colossal Swords can be and deals physical and magic damage. It has an average weight for a Colossal Sword now in Ring Wing 20, and requires a lot of points in Strength and Summon Dexterity and Intelligence in order to use. 
The Star Scourge Greatsword is a truly unique weapon because it's one of only two paired weapons in Elden Ring that aren't claws or fists. This allows you to dual wield these rather easily since colossal swords typically weigh too much to dual wield unless you are set up perfectly. Additionally, the weapon has decent attack rating and it deals an extra 30% damage to gravity type enemies. Its weapon skill Starcaller Cry has tremendous range, often one-shotting trash with its shout and the follow-up attack will finish off nearly everything else that isn't a boss. Starcaller Cry is not only buffed by Shard of Alexander but also Roar Medallion and Highland Axe as well, though only the shout portion is affected and not the follow-up attack. However, the shout portion will trigger talismans like Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prothesis, boosting the damage of the follow-up attack significantly if you can hit multiple enemies with the shout. The downside is that it is very expensive FP-wise to use, making it hard to use frequently. The sweet spot for this weapon is right around 50 strength and minimum requirements in Dexterity and Intelligence. However, Dexterity and Strength both scale about the same from this point onward, so you should prioritize those with Int having really bad scaling. This weapon can work well in NG+, because it scales well enough up to 80 strength and 50 Dexterity, but you will struggle to get damage afterwards, making a third playthrough more challenging. Because the intelligence scaling is so poor, and because this weapon is a unique paired weapon, I highly recommend dual wielding the swords and taking advantage of Starcaller Cry and Jump Attacks. It's simply way more difficult to dual wield any other colossal swords, making it almost a must way to play with these. Just be sure to use the Sacrificial Axe in your offhand for more FP gain. Next is the Godslayer's Greatsword. The Godslayer's Greatsword shares the default attack of most colossal swords and deals physical and fire damage. It has a light weight for a colossal sword in Elden Ring Wing 17.5, and requires some points in strength and dexterity and faith in order to wield. Godslayer's Greatsword is an interesting weapon because it deals physical and fire damage, it's very lightweight for a Colossal Sword, and it's one of the longer Colossal Swords. However, it's just above the Troll Knight Sword in terms of damage, meaning it has the second lowest damage of all unique Colossal Swords, and you have to defeat a rather difficult boss in order to obtain it. Its weapon skill, the Queen's Black Flame, does solid damage though and inflicts the Black Flame status with its strike sapping HP from the target over time. It has a rather long wind-up, making the timing a bit crucial, and this gives the weapon skill a bit of a learning curve. It also makes poison important so that you can swing uninterrupted, since you typically get hit while trading with this weapon. The sweet spot for this weapon is about 50 dexterity and minimum requirements in both strength and faith. However, if you two-hand this weapon, you get roughly the same damage out of pumping strength as you do from dexterity, making it a better option if you wish to cast incantations with the claw mark seal while using this weapon. You can get quite a bit of damage from this weapon via all three stats, making it a great choice for a second or third playthrough. Because you can two-hand this weapon with decent strength and faith and get nearly the same damage as if you pump dexterity, I highly recommend you go this route and cast some incantations with the claw mark seal. However, if you don't wish to do this, then simply pump dexterity and make sure to get faith to 25 for golden vow to further boost your damage when facing bosses or tough enemies while two-handing the rest of the time. Flame grant me strength is also amazing in this build, so make sure you have it slotted too. Next up is Malaketh's Black Blade, which is the last unique colossal sword. Malaketh's Black Blade shares the default attack of most Colossal Swords and deals physical and holy damage. It has a heavy weight for a Colossal Sword in Elden Ring, Wing 22, and requires a lot of points in Strength and Summon Faith and Dexterity in order to use. Malaketh's Black Blade has high attack rating for a Colossal Sword, it's one of the longer Colossal Swords in the game, it looks badass, and it has an excellent weapon skill in Destined Death, but about one third of its damage is holy, which is resisted by a lot of bosses and you cannot get this weapon until nearly the end of the game. This puts it in an odd place. Destined Death deals modest damage but removes 10% max HP of any target struck by it, and this can stack with Blade of Death or the Black Blade Incantation, but not both. For this reason, it's highly recommend that you use one of these with this weapon in order to remove 20% HP from a boss rather quickly. Of the two, Black Blade makes more sense, since you don't need much dexterity for this build. The sweet spot for this weapon is at 50 Strength and minimum requirements in both Dexterity and Faith, but Faith scales fairly well up to 50 and Strength scales fairly well up to 80, making this a solid weapon for a second or even third playthrough. Because you can pump Strength and Faith and get nearly the same damage you get from pumping Strength, I highly recommend doing so and slotting at least the Golden Vow and Black Blade incantations and using the Claw Mark Seal. You can of course add other incantations, but these two minimally should be used. Of all the unique Colossal Swords, Malaketh Black Blade makes the best case for a hybrid sort of build. And this takes us to our non-unique Colossal Swords. First up is the Zweihander. The Zweihander shares a unique R2 thrust with the Troll Knight's sword and deals physical damage. It's the lightest colossal sword in Elden Ring Wang 15.5 and requires some points in strength and dexterity in order to use. The Zweihander has the lowest attack rating of all colossal swords, but it's also the lightest, has the second longest reach, and has the lowest requirements needing only 13 strength to two hand. In addition, it has a thrusting R2 attack that has great range, and it can be found extremely early on in Elden Ring in the Weaving Peninsula. 
The Fire Infusion deals the most damage, followed by Magic and then Sacred and Flame Art pulling up a close third. Heavy and Cold are roughly the same damage, so it comes down to a choice of the status effect or whether you want to use buffs on your blade if you go those routes. The Zweihander makes a great choice for early game Colossal Sword users since they can procure it and wield it almost immediately. It's also lighter than a lot of Colossal Swords, allowing you to medium roll with less investment and endurance. Stamp Uppercut is also a fantastic weapon skill that works well throughout the game, and you can purchase this from the Warmaster Shack if you want to change infusions but still keep the weapon skill. Don't forget to use the Axe Talisman as well to boost your charged R2 poke damage. Up next we have the Great Sword, which is actually a Colossal Sword. The Great Sword has a unique slashing R2 and deals physical damage. It's tied for the heaviest Colossal Sword in Elden Ring, weighing 23, and requires a lot of points in strength and some in dexterity in order to use. The Great Sword is the pound for pound king of infusible Colossal Swords. It wins an attack rating in nearly every category over other infusible Colossal Swords. It's also the longest Colossal Sword and has the highest guard boost and protection, and you can acquire it with a two minute horse ride over to Caelid without killing a single enemy. The downside is that it's extremely heavy, making it a bit harder to wield early on and still medium roll. Just like this Y-Hander, the Fire Infusion deals the most damage, followed closely by Magic and then Sacred and Flame Art. Heavy and Cold are roughly the same damage, so it comes down to a choice of the status effect or whether or not you want to buff your blade. Heavy or Cold are great choices for this weapon early on, where the extra strength scaling from two-handing can play a large role in increasing your damage, and using the Curved Sword Talisman will increase your block counter damage, which you should be doing now and then with this weapon. You can also use the Great Shield Talisman to increase your guard boost with this weapon by 10%, giving you around 73 guard boost if you use the standard version of this weapon. Up next we have the Watchdog's Greatsword. The Watchdog's Greatsword shares the default attack of most Colossal Swords and deals physical damage. It has a very heavy weight for a Colossal Sword Nell Ring Wing 22, and requires a lot of points in strength and some dexterity in order to use. The Watchdog's Greatsword deals fantastic damage only just behind the Greatsword. However, it isn't as long as the Greatsword has lower guard boost, can take forever to farm, and cannot be found until near the end of the game, making it likely that by the time you get one by some miracle, you likely won't need it. The Fire Infusion deals the most damage, followed closely by Magic and then Sacred and Flame Art. Heavy and Cold again are roughly the same, so it comes down to which you want to choose, either having the Frostbite status effect or being able to buff your blade. I recommend using the Greatsword instead of this weapon and saving yourself the frustration of farming it, especially since it's not better than the Greatsword anyway, and you'll likely have your Greatsword upgraded to max upgrade or near max by the time you get it. However, if you do want to use this, I suggest using it in a similar manner to the Greatsword. And lastly, we come to the Troll's Golden Sword. The Troll's Golden Sword shares the default attack of most Colossal Swords and deals physical damage. It has an average weight for a Colossal Sword in Elden Ring, weighing 19, and requires a lot of points in strength and summon dexterity in order to use. The Troll's Golden Sword has lower damage than the majority of Colossal Swords, it's one of the shorter ones, and it's not found until Altus Plateau, making it likely that you already have a Colossal Sword and upgraded it by the time you even get one. However, it does seem to do more damage with Troll's Roar than other Colossal Swords, even though it has lower attack rating, making it a good choice if you really like this weapon's skill. Much like the other infusible Colossal Swords, Fire does the most damage, followed by Magic and Sacred and Flame Art pulling up third, and Heavy and Cold are about the same. I highly recommend leaning into Troll's Roar if you use this weapon and use it to stagger enemies often. Use Shard of Alexander and Roar Medallion to further boost damage with Highland Axe in your offhand as well. The Assassin's Talismans are also a good addition since you tend to get a lot of critical attacks when playing with this weapon skill. So that wraps up our video on Colossal Swords. I hope it was helpful. hope you guys learned something. Let me know what weapon you guys want to see next. I have no idea which one I'm going to do, so give me your suggestions on that. We have Wo Long Fallen Dynasty just around the corner, so you guys can expect to see some guides and builds on that not too far down the road but we will still be mixing in Elden Ring content as well, so stay tuned for more build guides and weapon videos.